In this video, we're gonna be covering everything you need to know about creating notifications for Home Assistant on both iOS and Android, from basic information notifications to advanced actionable notifications. And we're getting started right now. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, we covered person and object detection using any camera in Home Assistant. Make sure to check out that video if you haven't seen it, it's a good one. But a lot of the questions you guys had were how to create those actionable notifications. So that's what we're gonna to cover today. Also, make sure to stick around and I'll show you exactly how to get those image style notifications from your security camera straight to your phone. I'll take you through and show you the entire process on both Android and iOS because there are some subtle differences you need to know about. And to help with that, I've stolen, I mean borrowed my girlfriend's old iPhone because I am an Android user. So very quickly, what are actionable notifications? Well, we all know what notifications are, right? Those messages that are constantly popping up on our phone. Actionable notifications adds additional functionality by adding buttons to these messages that we can tap that will trigger a function to happen on your Home Assistant instance. For example, I could create a notification in Home Assistant that says, hey, I noticed the heating is on, but you left the window open. Do you want me to turn the heating off? And hitting yes to this would instantly turn off your heating. This A saves you money by not trying to heat the world, but B, more importantly, saves you time by not having to pull out the phone, open the app and turn off your heating manually. Because who has time for that? So for this guide, I'm gonna assume that you already have your iOS or Android device registered with your Home Assistant through the official Home Assistant app. If we take a look at my Lovelace dashboard, you can see that I have two views. One view has my temperature sensor and a heating switch and a camera view with my camera feed on it. These are the devices we're gonna be using for this demo. However, you can obviously use any device you want. We'll take a look at a couple of common style notifications. Firstly, I'll show you how to use some basic information style notifications that just tell you something. I'll show you how to control your devices from your lock screen. And I'll also show you how to attach images that you can tap on to take you into your security camera feed in Lovelace. This video will be kind of split up into two halves, but I'll have the timestamps linked down below if you want to jump ahead to the relevant section. I'll show you how to do the exact same thing on both platforms. Let's start off with the Android notifications. For those of you who haven't done any notifications before, let's start off with a super quick hello message straight to our phone. For our basic notification, we're gonna start off by creating a new automation. Make sure to give it a name so that you know what it is for in the future. This notification is gonna ping me a message when I arrive home. So my trigger I use is my person entity and I set the to value as home. And then in the action, I set the type to call service and the service to notify mobile app Android. The name on your service will be slightly different depending on what the name of your phone is. In the service data, we simply set a title for the notification, set a message, save and use the execute button at the top to give it a try and this will give us a notification that looks like this. Expanding on this basic message, it would be nice if we could receive some information about say the temperature of a room. But how do we do this since this value would always be changing and it's not just some static text? Well, to do that, we can use templates within our notifications. Create a new notification and as always, give it a name. This time, I'm just gonna use a time as a trigger so that Home Assistant will send a message at 12 p.m. every day to let me know the temperature. As the action, we use the same call service as before and we set the title same as before. And this time we have the ability to drop in a template right into the message. In this case, I'm using the state of my living room temperature sensor. Press save and then execute to give it a test, which results in a notification that looks like this. So that's pretty cool and useful, but let's take it up a gear. What if we could add some buttons to the notification to allow us to switch the heating on or off? This time, edit the temperature notification we created in the last step. And this time we're gonna add a couple of actions. Create an action that contains a unique value. And this value is what will be sent back to Home Assistant. So make sure to remember this as we will need it later. Then add a title, which is what will be shown on the button. You can also add multiple buttons, maybe one for on and one for off. Save and execute and this results in a notification that looks like this. This is nice but tapping these buttons doesn't actually do anything and that's because we haven't told Home Assistant what to do with them yet. Head back and create a new notification and we're going to create an automation that listens for our notification action. As a trigger, choose the event type. 
set the type to mobile app notification action, and then in the data box, set the action to heating on. This is the same as the unique ID we set in the previous automation. In the action, call the service to set the switch heating on, and then create a new notification just to acknowledge that the automation worked. The final notification looks like this. Finally, what about if we wanted to create a notification that would send an image straight to our phone that we could then tap on and it would take us into a live camera feed? Well, we can do that too. Create a new automation and this time we're going to use the person detection camera that is being provided from Dudes. I'll have that video linked up in the cards and in the description if you haven't seen it, but that is what I'm choosing for my trigger when the total matches goes above zero. Then we do our usual call service with a title and a message and this time we are adding in an image. Use the path that we are saving our person detection image to. Again, you'll find that in the video if you aren't sure. You don't have to provide the full path, you can use the shortened path if you want to. And finally, we add a click action with the path to our Lovelace view that we want to be open directly from the notification. You can get this path by heading to the page you want in your browser and grabbing it from the URL. This results in a notification that looks like this. So that's how to create notifications on Android, but here we are now at the iOS section of the video and we're going to create all the exact same notifications. Let's start off with that basic information style notification. If you watch the Android section of the video, firstly, thank you because that helps out the algorithm, but secondly, there isn't too much difference here. Go ahead and create a new automation and give this automation a name that describes its function. I want this notification to trigger when I arrive home, so I set my person entity home as the trigger. And then in the action type, I set call service and set the service to the notify mobile app iPhone as the service. The name of your service will change slightly depending on the name of your device. Set a title for the notification and finally set a message. Then go ahead and save and execute and it results in a notification that looks like this. Pretty basic stuff, right? We've added a notification with some static text, but what if we wanted to add a dynamically changing value like a temperature? We can do that with templates. Create a second notification with a name, and this time for the trigger, I'm gonna choose a time of 12 p.m. so that I get a temperature update every day at that time. Create your action with the mobile app as the action, same as before, with a title and a message. However, this time in the message, we can insert a dynamic value using a template. You can see that I'm using the state of my living room temperature here as the value. If we save and execute this, it results in a notification that looks a little bit like this. Okay, so that's pretty useful, but what would be even more useful is the ability to trigger the heating to come on from this message. This is where things start to get a little bit more convoluted than it does on Android, because there are some extra steps we need to do in order to create those buttons. First, we need to push some categories down to our iOS devices. In the iOS app, head to App Configuration and then Notifications. You will see that under the Categories and the Synced Categories, we have zero entries. Head to your Home Assistant configuration and then we're gonna add some new lines in order to push down categories to iOS automatically. You can skip these steps if you want to manually create them on each iOS device, but I suggest doing it this way instead. We're gonna create a category called Heating that has a unique identifier. Make sure that this is lowercase and then we also add two actions to this category, one for heating on and one for heating off. Now head back to the temperature automation we created earlier and down in the action section, we're gonna add those actions to the no notification like so. Make sure the category matches up with the unique identifier from earlier. Save and execute this action, which looks like this. As you may have noticed, that doesn't actually do anything in Home Assistant yet. That's because we need to tell Home Assistant to listen for that event. Create a new automation which will listen for our action. Choose event as the trigger and set the iOS notification action fired as the type. In the action name, set this to heating on. Make sure this matches up with the action identifier from earlier. 
Finally, in the action, set the heating switch to turn on as a service, and we will also want to add a second action to send the notification. That way we know when it's worked and we get some sort of feedback to indicate that. Save and execute, and the results in the full thing now looking like this. Cool, now we can toggle any device we want right from an iOS notification. Let's take a look at how to get that security camera feed into a notification that we can then tap on and it will take us straight into a live feed. Create a new automation and this time we're going to use the person detection camera that is being provided from Dudes. I'll have that video linked up in the cards and in the description if you haven't seen it, but that is what I'm choosing from my trigger when the total matches goes above zero. Then we do our usual call service with a title and a message and this time we're going to be adding in an attachment that it is an image from a URL. You'll notice I also add a second URL to the data block. This URL is the one that controls the tap action and will take us into the Lovelace view. You can get this URL by opening the view in your browser and copying the URL. The final notification looks like this. That is how to create some really cool and useful notifications that we can use to further automate our lives and hopefully save us a little bit of time because that's what home automation is all about, right? Definitely not about spending 10 hours to automate a task that usually takes you 20 seconds to do. Actually, let me know in the comments, what's the longest time you've ever spent automating a simple task? But that about does it for this video. Hopefully you learned a few things and you can take them away and apply them to your own home assistant instance to further notify your life. Thank you very much for watching and supporting. Get subscribed if you aren't already. Drop this video a like and leave your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.